today I'm going to be unboxing and reviewing the Netgear Nighthawk X6 AC3000 tri-band Wi-Fi router. This is model number 7900. Uh, you might be thinking, well, I've heard of the R8000, the Netgear Nighthawk X6, which is an AC3200 router, but this one, this one's a 7900. Now, you might be thinking, well, this is probably a predecessor to that R8000, but actually it's not. This is a Nighthawk that's been specifically made for Costco. Uh, a lot of times Costco, in order to sell products cheaper, requires a manufacturer to create a whole new product just to just to not be able to compete with the other one. So if you've seen the 8000 on Amazon or, or Best Buy or your regular electronics retailer, that's the that's the standard model. This is a special model specific for Costco. You can get it on Costco.com. It's usually priced at two hundred and fifty dollars. I got this one for two hundred and ten dollars. There was a forty dollar off promotion at the time. And as a new Costco member, I also had $25 off, $250 or more. So I, bu I bundled a couple other items and uh, got the $25 bucks off. So this was essentially $185 plus tax. So before I get to the unboxing, I just want to say a little bit about this router. My needs, I had a old D-Link 54G wireless router. This thing finally crapped out after, after many, many years. Um, and you might think, well... I don't have that many devices or I don't need that much throughput, why would I get a Netgear Nighthawk X6? Well, I want strong signal in my house and even if I don't use the full throughput, I'm expecting this thing to last me at least 10 years like my old D-Link did and I can get my money's worth if I keep it that long and it, and it keeps up. So I was looking for a reliable router that's basically future-proof. Um, I got sick of adding a bunch of extenders everywhere in my house. On top of that, adding a 5 gigahertz network onto, uh, onto my house as well to match up my mobile devices. Um, I had these, these and these basically everywhere. So that became expensive and I figured why not just dump all that stuff and get a good router that's got some future proofing um, and, and should, uh, should last me quite a long time. So now let's get to the unboxing. Uh, this is a sealed box. Uh, it shows Netgear. Um, it's got the picture, tri-band Wi-Fi wi router. Um, here you get the specific information. It's uh, R7900-100NAS, and you can see my serial number. Please don't steal it from me. Um, it's made in Vietnam. On the back of it, you can see on the box, it shows uh, three dedicated Wi-Fi bands. Um, you got 2.4 gigahertz for all your legacy devices, which in my house I've got a bunch of Belkin Wemo switches, I've got a bunch of D-Link smart plugs, I've got two Wi-Fi thermostats um, on top of tablets and phones and TVs and everything everywhere else. So um, you, this one was very important to me because of all my legacy devices. And then the other two bands, that's, that's for the future proofing. Now, other than that, there's some more uh, information. The warranty is one year. Um, hopefully it doesn't break in that time, but if it, if it makes it past a year, I'm assuming it's going to make it longer. It's got some other information, security. And again, you know, it's got multiple bands. Um, it comes with Ethernet cable. Well, we'll see all this stuff in a second. And the main difference between this one and the standard R8000. Number one, it's this is an AC3000 instead of an AC3200. And the 200 that's lost is actually not on the AC bands, it's on the wireless N band. So the AC3200 has a 600 megabit per second network on, on the 2.4 gigahertz band. 5 gigahertz and, and the other 5 gigahertz are both 1.3 on the uh, AC3200. So all you're losing is on the N band, not on the faster bands. The other main difference is the AC, uh, I'm sorry, the R7900 has one USB 3.0 plug and the R8000 has one USB 2.0 plug and one USB 3.0 plug. Um, I prefer the extra ones because you can run a printer on the USB 2.0 plug and then run a hard drive on the USB 3.0, but you can solve this pretty easily if you just get a USB 3.0 hub and attach it to this and you could have multiple devices attached to it. So 
let's let's go ahead and unbox this thing. Um, just going to do it live here. These plastics are always tough to, to undo, but here we go. Let's get that open. Okay, so it's getting unsealed. Toss that, and let's check out if we open it up. And this thing is, I gotta tell you, it's really, it's really heavy. Um, you know what, before I even open it up, let me, let me get the scale. So here I've got an ordinary postal scale that I use for shipping old crap. And let's zero it out. So we put the net gear on there. The packaging weighs four pounds, nine ounces. And it says right on the box that the actual unit weighs 2.43 pounds. We'll check that in a second. So let's get rid of this and let's continue with the unboxing. Okay. So, bye bye, pretty box. Hello, cardboard box. So, this is what you'll find on the inside. You've got the router on the top. Uh, the antennas are flat at this point, you have to extend them. Um, you know, it's factory sealed, it's got all my information on there. You get a quick start guide which hopefully is going to be useful. There's an AC plug which is standard. It's got the, uh, I forgot what that's called, but it's standard. Here's the actual power brick. Uh, it's a fat brick. It's rated at 12 volts, 5 amps, so you can probably get a more efficient unit and plug it in or if this thing ever burns out these 12 volt adapters are, are really cheap to, to find. And then a standard Ethernet cable, but you probably want to use your own or a Cat6 because um, I believe this is Cat5. So that's what's that's what's in the box. Simple as that. Let's get rid of that, and I will bring this guy back. So let's see how much this guy actually weighs. Two pounds, four ounces. They were they were pretty accurate. Um, it's actually lighter than they said, but. I'm assuming maybe they added in some other weight into it. Um, so that's that's the unboxing right there. So let's get rid of this postal scale. And let's take a closer look at the actual router. I'm going to break the seal here. So now you can see that these are the antennas. They, um, I don't want to break it. Okay, so this is, sorry, you didn't see that on there. So they just uh, slide open and out, and then they lock into a position, and they they don't move left or right. They just, oh, they do move, for, they just move back. So it seems like there's not much adjustment in these. This one doesn't move at all, and then this one at the bottom moves this way. Okay, so the top one moves out and flat and the bottom one moves out and flat and the middle one doesn't move at all and they don't move any further out than that that's the uh, maximum that it moves so let me put those back in there until I'm ready to use them I don't want to mess them up um, again it's got it's got my network password and everything built on there obviously I'm going to change it so you can't hack into my house and um, yeah I mean it's Pretty nice design. So again, there's no USB 2.0 plug where uh, where R8000 would have one. LEDs on and off. Those can get annoying depending on where you place it. So you might want to have it on and off. There's four gigabit Ethernet ports, one WAN port, USB 3.0, a reset button, an on/off button, and then the power adapter. Pretty simple. It's got all your information on the display right there. Power. Internet, 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, 1, 5 gigahertz, 2, USB 3.0, guest Wi-Fi, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then Wi-Fi on and off LED, and finally WPS. So that's, uh, that's what you get with the R7900 versus an R8000. Um, I can show you a couple screens from, from setting it up, but that's essentially what's in the box.